So you guys sent me another email with another challenge. So we're, we're taking this image and turning it into a 3D mesh that we can rotate. At the end of this video, we're gonna render with iRender, but that's later. Of course, I'm gonna do this in geometry nodes. That's just the way I do. So make it a geo nodes object. And if you looked at the original picture, it's basically a sphere with kind of like a spiral cut out of it. Luckily for us, these are both primitives that exist. Starting with the sphere, I'm going to make it higher res and I'm gonna join these together so I can see them in reference to each other. I'm gonna keep the radius consistently at one and we should be able to transform this downwards so that the top of this is level, the bottom of this is level, and we can now add in some more rotations. I wanna take each point on the spiral and map it to the nearest point on the sphere. Now, an obvious way to do that is obviously with ray casting, but a sphere is kind of like a special scenario where a sphere is the set of all points that are equidistant to the center. Okay, enough mumbo jumbo. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to set position on my curve, and then for the position, I'm gonna map it to itself, but the key insight is I'm going to run it through a vector math set to normalize. And now you can see it's kind of like constrained more so if we were to make this thing taller. Now we get a mapping that looks a lot better. Now I'm not sure if in the original it kind of got denser as we got towards the bottom. Let me actually check that. Okay, it doesn't. We need to have it be like uniformly distributed. So that's actually a bit harder. So instead of having a spring like we're doing that's kind of like uniformly distributed, we can compress the majority of the spring towards the center. So to do this, I'm going to use set position again. We can actually just use its spline parameter. So I'm going to take the position and I'm going to multiply it. Most importantly, we want to control the Z component. X and Y are equal to one and Z is going to be our compression. And for our compression, I want to be able to draw a custom shape, connect that to the Z. You can actually like map the compression to this, which is pretty cool. In the beginning, the top and bottom should be equal to one so that we're multiplying by one on the Z axis. But for the center point, which we can center and we can uh, move up and down, this is where we want our compression. So this seems okay. And at this point, I'm going to call that good. If you want this to revolve all the way to the center, this is kind of like a limiting function where you have to have the spiral infinitely tall. Now, the question is, how do we take this and kind of cut away pieces of our sphere to kind of make an indent? Well, what we're going to do is obviously use some like proximity effects, but because the sphere kind of has bad geometry where there's a pole on the top and the bottom, I'm thinking I'm going to use an icosphere, but I'm going to bring up the divisions, which still looks like a sphere, but now we get a even distribution. And what I want to do is I want to modify this by offsetting along the normal. I'm going to take our normalized spiral. I'm going to compare it to the nearest point or edge or whatever. Probably edge is the best. And if we're doing edge, we just got to convert this into a mesh. So it's going to look for the nearest edge. And then we can plug that into the scale. And you can see it does something kind of like what we want. If you had this set to points, you'd get these ridges, which is why I'm doing edge. And I'm thinking to start, let's use a map range where we can first of all map this to like a smaller amplitude. And second of all, we can kind of set the threshold for where we should be seeing this effect. And to kind of flip this, I'm going to make it a negative. We basically just need to add more geometry as we go. We're getting this kind of yin yang shape at the top, which is actually a cool idea for making a yin yang later on, but we don't want it. So kind of disable clamp. I'm going to change this to smooth step so that it's smoother. Set shade smooth. Let's apply a material to this. And I'm just going to set up my render space so that there's an HDRI. Be right back. So I'm going to make it metallic. I'm going to lower the roughness until it's pretty shiny. Well, looking at the original, it's kind of this like super shiny, like scratched metal. So I'm going to first of all, kind of match the color that I want here. And second of all, the thing that's going to make this look semi good is going to be our scratches. I'm going to use a wave texture to simulate that on the Z axis, and we can increase the scale so that there's more lines. And let's just add some like detail here so that it doesn't look perfect. And we take this, send it through a bump node for some normal mapping, increase the scale of this. And you kind of have to be a bit subtle with this. And let's give this thing kind of like a stage to work on. This is just so we can see our thing more in context. Another thing we can do that's going to up the realism immediately is we're going to add a roughness map that's going to make it so that it's not exactly as shiny in every spot, surface imperfections and all that, make a high contrast noise texture, increase the detail, increase the roughness and bring down the scale. We connect that to the roughness and view it. And now you can see it's not the same everywhere. High roughness area and bring it down a little. And finally, we got to make this thing rotate. So to do that, I'm not even going to do it in geo nodes. I'm just going to take this Z rotation and we will map it to the driver of hash frame over 30, which which just means take the frame number and divide it by 30. It's too slow, so divide it by like 10. So I'm just gonna set this a little off of its axis, just rotate it a bit on the Y so that it just has like a bit of variation going on. So I'm just gonna bring down the exposure, which is gonna let us actually see the edges of this. So before it's kind of like all blown out. For now, I'm just gonna enable motion blur, which is definitely gonna be a factor if this is spinning, bring down samples. And let's get a render of this, add a bit of a hue offset to get this to kind of look more like green, something like that. So this is the before and the after, I think it's just a nice 
nicer color palette. And to kind of add definition, both to where it's touching the ground and to these lines, we can get that via some ambient occlusion. So I like to render ambient occlusion as well. So here you can see the AO map. And what I like to do is I like to mix this with the ambient occlusion, making sure to set this to multiply. Of course, you don't want it to be so strong, so bring that down. Final thing to make this look super cool is a vignette. So I'm just going to take a ellipse mask, make it bigger, and also one by one aspect ratio. I want to flip this. So I'm going to take one minus. We are going to blur it by, let's say, 400 pixels. Finally, I'm going to use this as a factor in an alpha over. So here's what that looks like. And I want this vignette to pretty much be black, which we can make not as intense, very simply, by multiplying this effect. Maybe you could throw in a glare in here. It might be a bit overpowering. OK, that, that's pretty much the render. So there you go. Another tutorial in the bucket. Blend file is going to be available on Patreon as always, link below. And if you want other tutorials, you could just email me. As mentioned, this tutorial is sponsored by iRender, which is a render farm, which seems to work with everything, but that includes Blender cycles. When you go to iRender GPU, you're going to see this website. This isn't actually where you use it. You actually download a client or a program, iRender GPU installed. We have all of these options. I'm going to use 14090 RTX. Here you can see the pricing. It's per machine per hour. Give this machine a name so we know what it is. I'm going to call it C G Matter Machine Supercharged <laughs> Windows 11. I'm going to say Blender. That's the most important part. And it's going to start creating our machine. And if we go to transfer data, this is where we can like upload our file. Like the file I just made, you do this, but then you see you actually need to have credits to do that, because why would you upload a file if you're not going to render it? Don't worry, you don't need to invest $230 minimum, but you do get a bonus if you do. I think $50 might be the minimum. So on machine GPU, you can see that the machine we created with the 4090, it's been made. And we have an input, an output, and then the softwares, which includes Blender. For the input, I'm just going to drag it here. When you make and then save your Blend file, you want to ask yourself, do I have external data here? Now, in this case, there actually is additional data because I use a HDRI. So just go to File, go to External Data, and just hit Automatically Pack Resources. And you know what? We're young. Let's just do two 4090s. Okay, this one is ready to be booted. And you can choose, do you want to do a pay-as-you-go or rental plan? 15 points per hour. Let's boot the machine. So let's connect to it. Okay, it is booting. And here are the things to know. First of all, as you look here, you have the pay-as-you-go, which will tell you how many credits you're using per how much time you're in there. So let's go quickly to save our credits. We have Blender installed. And then in the File Explorer, if I go to this PC, you're going to see all the drives we talked about. Specifically, in the input drive, I'm going to open up my file. Before you do anything, go to edit preferences system and make sure this is set to optics with both of your GPUs so that's actually using the things that you're paying for. I'm just going to do a PNG sequence for now on the output drive. So I'm just going to hit accept. So here you can see it's like blazing through these samples. I go to the output. Yep, you can see that the um, images are rendering out. When you're done with your machine, whether you're using Blender or whatever, you're going to make sure that you want to close it. So I'm just going to close this out. want to shut it down. Make sure you save your progress, hit shut down. And then again, to download this data, I'm going to select all our frames, right click, download. You can see if we go through these images, it indeed has rendered. That's the iRender render farm. Check it out if you need faster rendering. Link in the description. And that is it. Thanks for watching.